High Court in November last year, Zuma and co accused Talis lost their bid to seek leave to appeal a judgment for a permanent stay of prosecution. They're facing multiple charges, including corruption and racketeering. Let's take you there live. Last year, at the last hearing, we provided the updated forensic report. So, as far as the state is concerned, we provided the defense with uh, the usual documents which, uh, which are necessary for them to prepare for trial. And as always, the state is ready for trial. Um, obviously, further pretrial issues, as uh, as detailed further in the pretrial minute, um, might intervene. But in principle, we're ready to proceed, and the defence has got everything they need uh, to to commence their preparation for the trial. Um, then, furthermore, if I could just um, update the court briefly about the appeals processes, the parties, I must say, the defence um, and uh, I, I hope the state uh, were were uh, quite astute in sticking to the, to the dates, so things moved along quickly as they should have. And um, I, I, I must express my appreciation to my learned friends for, for doing this. So in, let's just look at, at Tali's. Tali's um, immediately, on the 1st of November, filed their application to the Constitutional Court for direct access to the Constitutional Court. Um, and by various dates passed by, but by the um, 15th of November 2019, last year, uh, Talis had filed their uh, replying affidavit and the application to file that. So the proceedings, as it were, the pleadings in the Constitutional Court closed on the 15th of November last year. And so from that date, we are waiting for further directions or orders from the Constitutional Court, either declining to take the appeal or to issue directions relating to the further conduct of the appeal in the Constitutional Court for Talis. Um, uh, then uh, Mr. Zuma and Tali's accused number one, numbers one and two both filed their applications for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, the SCA. That was also done um, in, uh, precipitately. The 31st of October, Tali's filed their conditional application and um, the conditional on their appeal in the, in the Constitutional Court being unsuccessful. And Mr. Zuma on the 1st of November filed his application in the High Court for leave to appeal to the SCA. So things were going along swimmingly. We, as a state, then commenced uh, correspondence with Mr. Zuma's uh, legal representatives, Mr. Muncher, and we said that we invite them to join Talis in their direct application to the Constitutional Court. And we said that should they do so, we would not take the, the procedural point that they're cutting out the Supreme Court of Appeal in other words, we would agree that the matter go directly to the Constitutional Court. Obviously, we would still oppose the appeal, but we thought that in doing so, it would cut out a whole series of appeals in the Supreme Court of Appeal. Obviously, if the Constitutional Court were prepared to hear us all, um, then that might cut out a whole... So we, we wrote to Talis in, in detail... Uh, sorry, we wrote to Mr. Zuma in detail, inviting him to, to, to follow this route, um, and we received no reply from them, and they proceeded not to file any application in the Constitutional Court, but to proceed with their uh, appeals in, with their appeal in the, um, well, first of all, for leave to appeal uh, in this court, and then after that to the, to the Supreme Court of Appeal. So um, that, that will then indicate the steps that we took to try and curtail the appeals processes, unending processes of appeals to the various levels of courts going up to the Constitutional Court, but we were unsuccessful as far as Mr. Zuma was concerned in getting him to agree to do this. Right, and then after that uh, abortive invitation, shall I say, uh, this court, the full court, on the uh, 22nd of November heard the arguments and on the 29th of November uh, issued a, a judgment, the full court judgment, dismissing both parties' applications for leave to appeal in all respects. That's both the, uh, the uh, permanent stay aspects of both parties and also the review uh, part of the, the appeal against the review in respect of Talis' application. Um, uh, nothing, nothing, um, uh, yeah, uh, and Zuma Zoom, and Talis then proceeded to lodge their appeals for leave to appeal with the SEA. The dates we give here in the minute. Mr. Zuma on the 18th of December launched his application. And Tali's on the 20th of December, just before Christmas. Theirs was conditional on, on the um, constitutional court matter not being successful. 
And we filed our opposing answering affidavits early, I think a good month early, um, uh, thus anticipating the dates of filing the Court of Appeal. On the 21st of January 2020, we filed our, our answer, and Mr. Zuma very quickly filed his replying affidavit dated the 30th of January 2020 last week. So, for, so as far as the Supreme Court of Appeal is concerned, we are all now waiting for orders and directions from the Supreme Court of Appeal relating to the uh, success of the application or otherwise, or further orders and directions from the Supreme Court of Appeal. Um, so as we now sit, my lady, the, the pleadings are closed in respect of all the parties in all courts. Um, the Supreme Court of Appeal, I should say both courts, the Supreme Court of Appeal and the Constitutional Court, so we're waiting for directions from them. So we've done everything we can to process, and um, we, we expect to hear relatively uh, early, we would hope, from, from both or either courts. Um, might I also just say, my lady, that uh, we know, and this is um, it elucidated in correspondence between us and, and discussions, we know that uh, it is possible that Mr. Zuma, if he would be unsuccessful in his application to the Supreme Court of Appeal for leave to appeal, he, he may well, and he's indicated that he will, launch a further application for leave to appeal to the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, special leave to appeal. That process has time periods which have to be adhered to and, and uh, com complied with. And should he then be unsuccessful, then a further application to the Constitutional Court lies again with the periods for the filing of papers, etc. So the appeals process, as far as uh, both parties is concerned, uh, has not yet been concluded, and there are further processes which are, have not yet been commenced. So that's where we are. If one, if one uh, has to estimate in terms of, of weeks, days, or months, how long it will be, uh, well, that's how long is a piece of string, but we are reaching the end of that process. Uh, in, in, in the appreciable future, as I would hope. Let's put it that way. My lady, let me then just um, address the court about some pretrial management issues. Um, we indicated to the court um, at the last provisional hearing on the 15th of October that we would commence such proceedings, even, even though uh, the process, I suppose, as far as Mr. Zuma is concerned, has been suspended and, and it's, it's premature. I'll get to that now. But let me just tell you what we've done. Um, First of all, on the 15th of January, Mr. Zuma directed a letter to us to say that he would not be available to attend court today. And uh, due to the fact that he would be attending to medical treatment abroad, as from the date was given, uh, in January, the 23rd of January, until mid-March 2020. And furthermore, they requested our consent uh, that the matter be postponed today to a holding date in April 2020. We replied that as far as the, the postponement of the matter to April is concerned, we don't have a problem. We will consent to that mm -hmm. because, but not on the basis of Mr. Zuma's illness at, at present, but because the appeals process in respect of all the parties has not yet been concluded, and we need that to conclude before we can, uh, before we can start setting trial dates. And so we were happy with the date of April 2020. We're happy that it be a provisional date. But we did inform Mr. Zuma that his impending absence from court needs, let us say, further work. We don't simply accept a letter uh, relating to uh, the illness of an accused in general and treating all accused equally. We are obliged to interrogate that issue. That issue. And so, um, in, our, in, our, in our letter um, of the 16th of January, we replied immediately to Mr. Zuma and said, please supply us with the relevant medical certificates so that we can formulate a position relating to what we're going to do about his absence from court. Um, I'll address a, a brief argument to the court in this respect in due course. So this is what we told them, and, and this is under uh, cover of a letter from the DPP of this division, um, asking Mr. Muncher to provide us with copies of the medical evidence that he would be presenting today, uh, or uh, to us in advance, and we received no reply from Mr. Muncher uh, to that letter. Um, and we also asked them uh, what about admissions and, and further pre-trial preparation, etc. And um, we, 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 in the interim, because of um, um, a question from, from the judge acting judge president of this division to say what is going to happen today on the 4th of February, 
we, we informed the judge president what the state of play was. That the impending absence of Mr. Zuma and the pre-trial negotiations between the parties, etc. And uh, we mentioned that in the, in the pre-trial minute. Um, Mr. Muncher replied that on the 22nd of January that he was, he was unhappy that he'd written to the DJP. Um, and he indicated that our invitation to him to start trial preparation by way of are, are they making admissions? What are we going to do um, about um, other uh, pre-trial issues? Are we going to make other further pre-trial applications for further particulars, etc., etc.? He said on behalf of Mr. Zuma in this letter dated the 22nd of January that it was premature that such issues should be considered, and he said that, uh, in any case, um, it was premature and his client has no financial resources to incur the legal costs unnecessary. So the pre-trial process, which we attempted to start precipitately, has, has, has not been started on behalf of Mr. Zuma for the reasons which I've given. Uh, Tali's, uh, uh, our interactions with them have been somewhat more productive. I met with Mr. Rue, uh, my learned friend, uh, who is new counsel for, for Tali's for trial purposes, they introduced themselves to us. We discussed pre-trial issues, the various issues which are pending, which are possibilities. Um, is Mr. Durand in court? Mr. Durand is in court, and I'll bring an application that, that this mm. court uh, um, add in as the representative in terms of 33222. Well. Um, and, and so, yes, and so we've re re received a request from Tali's to provide them with interim inf information so that they can respond properly to our so there's negotiations correspondence between the parties. We owe them an answer and we owe them uh, some analysis of information. So I submit that the time has been used productively to, to, uh, with a view to shortening the issues and to reaching a stage where we can say that we're ready to go on trial. Obviously that's a process and we'll, we'll progress that as far as best we can. And I really appreciate um, the attitude of Tali's for, for, for accommodating us in this respect. Um, so, at paragraph 29, by way of a formal application, uh, my lady, as your ladyship has said, uh, I asked um, my learned friends, given that they had told me that Ms. Guria was no longer um, available, she previously was a representative in terms yes. of Section 332 of the Criminal Procedure Act. Your ladyship will know that for the past couple of hearings, uh, their representative has been absent uh, with, uh, with consent. And um, we now have um, been informed by our colleagues for tardies, accused number two, that Mr. Pierre Marie Durand, as indicated in the minute, is indeed uh, in the process of being appointed by Tardis as an agent or representative in terms of Section 3322B of the CPA. And uh, looking at the provisions of Section 3322B, it is for the state to apply to the court when an accused becomes unavailable um, for whatever reason. It is for us to apply to the and we, with the consent of, of Talis, do indeed make that application, and we've agreed that he will be present at uh, further proceedings. And um, That's for the substitution of Mr. Durand. In terms of section mm. 332, in brackets 2, in brackets B. Of, oh, and my learned friend has now handed, has given me um, the resolution, so we'll, we'll settle this between us. We'll, we'll make sure that we're happy with that, and I'm sure we'll, we'll make sure that both parties are happy and that mm -hmm. we're satisfied. The, uh, the court that that is correct. So then I ask the court to order that Mr. Durand be substituted. The court ladyship can address that in due course. Now, my lady, the final issue then is in relation to Mr. Zuma's absence from court today. Um, I must say that, that it's, it's disappointing that despite, and I should say that we are reminded uh, this week, I mean, yes, or, or, or last week, my learned friend, Mr. Muncher, to about the about our invitation, please to give us uh, medical um, certificates, evidence, whatever uh, uh, he chose to give us, to put us in the picture relating to what the illness is, which prevents Mr. Zuma from being present today, and why um, it is necessary that he should have to seek medical treatment abroad, in broad terms, because I submit, my lady, that in terms of Section 170, it is a criminal offence for an accused not to be present in court, having been warned by the court on the 15th of October to be present today. And the procedure, as we understand it, my lady, is that the court has to hold an inquiry relating to any uh, justifiable reasons for the absence. And if it's medical, medically related, obviously we are obliged to assist the court to evaluate uh, the nature of any medical evidence. My lady, 
That is what is the case uh, in respect of any accused, and we treat all accused equally. And thus, the procedure is the same in any court in this country, from the magistrates' courts to the regional courts to the high courts. When an accused is absent, there is an issue, and an inquiry has to be held, and the court has to be satisfied in the end that, that the absence is, is justified. The procedure uh, in respect of the postponement of proceedings is without any exception that being criminal proceedings and being that the accused that remains um, under the jurisdiction of the criminal court, the postponement has to be subject to the issuing of a warrant of arrest for an absent accused. I know there's a debate in the law about whether the warrant of arrest can be held over, the execution of a warrant of arrest can be held over or not. I think sensibly the law allows, and it is an invariable practice of these courts and all courts in our country, except I think in the Northwest, if I'm not mistaken, that um, warrants of arrest may fairly be, be the, the execution of warrants of arrest may fairly be, be uh, suspended, Stand. pending the result of any inquiry which might be at some future time. So, so that, 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 I submit, is the general procedure. So we ask, in the circumstances of this case, that the accused is not here, admittedly so, he's, he's in, in fact not here, um, that a warrant of arrest be issued um, at the conclusion of these proceedings for his, that a warrant of arrest be issued. This, the, the suspension of the execution of the warrant of arrest and when the inquiry relating to his, um, to his medical condition uh, should be held is, is a matter which the court will determine. Is there a limit to the period of suspension? I, I don't think so, my lady. Um, I understood that it might be 14 days in the past. Yeah, well, that uh, is, certainly that was a practice, that but a practice. I don't know whether yeah. that is, um, that is... That is the practice, and that is, that, that is what the state has in mind, uh, that the inquiry must be held fairly soon. Um, and, and there's another aspect uh, of this issue which I wish to address, my lady, and that is this. We were informed by my learned friend, Mr. Muncher, quite fairly, I would, I would submit on the, on the 15th of January of this year that his client would not be here today, Mr. Zulu would be absent, and he would be abroad, and it would be for medical reasons. That is as much as we know. As I have told the court, we immediately on the 16th of January invited them, please, in advance, to give us medical certificates or evidence, or whatever they intended to produce today, before your ladyship. Um, so that we would know what to do about it. We might very well accept that Mr. Zuma is gravely ill. Urgent medical attention here or abroad, whatever. There's no reason to think that that, that may not be so. There's also no reason to doubt my learned friend's work. We, we, we accept his, his, his bona fides. That is the information which he has. The problem is, my lady, that as with any accused, the word of counsel and indeed the content of medical certificates is not without more simply acceptable as sufficient justification to relieve that accused of the duty of being in court. And in this case, um, um, I, I, I've been informed by then friend, uh, again fairly, and I have had discussions this morning, we were informed that, that, that Mr. Zuma did indeed leave the country sometime after the 23rd of January. So by the time he left the country, the invitation to Mr. Mancha on behalf of Mr. Zuma, the invitation from the state to please give us some idea of what is going on, what his condition is, and why he has to go out of the country, has uh, he received that invitation, and that invitation has been ignored. Yes, I get it. So, so, so the, the, any medical condition which precipitated his leaving the country uh, with or without whatever medical personnel, uh, uh, that condition was diagnosed and the witnesses and medical personnel available to give that evidence were in the country and available to my learned friend, such as our request, our invitation to them, please to put us in the picture, should be could and could be answered. But that was not answered. And that, that I submit, is, is, is redounds to the discredit of, um, of, of, of counsel for Mr. Zuma and Mr. Zuma's legal representatives. And I submit that your ladyship will take that into account in the judging what should be done about the absence uh, of Mr. Zuma. I should also put on record, as I think I'm entitled to, my little friend will 
will either hand up or, or apply for some procedure to make known to your ladyship um, uh, that he has a medical certificate. He will address you on the content, I'm not going to, but as far as we are concerned, we have had sight of such certificate, but it is, insuff it is insufficient for, the, for our purposes, and I've informed Mr. Much of that. Um, I think no more need be said about that, except that in the circumstances that the state is not in a position to fairly to, um, to help the court with the contrary view, if there is such, or with, with, an, with an evaluation of the medical evidence with a view to consenting to his, to his absence, with a view to uh, agreeing to a long postponement, with a view to suspending the, uh, the, the application for the execution of the warrant. All of that, we as a state are at a disadvantage of being able to assist the court. And that being so, um, we, the, the application uh, uh, will, will, will be made and has been made for the, for the issuing of the warrant. So roughly you're asking for three orders, one, the substitution of Mr. Durand, uh, the, the um, issuing and staying of the warrant of execution um, for a period that we will, you want me to determine, and thirdly, that the, the substantive trial be scheduled for some time in April, or at least the matter, criminal matter be adjourned for some time in April, uh, pending the finalization of the appeals, hopefully by that date. Yeah, there's just two glosses on that, brother. Yeah. We don't at this stage ask that the issuing be suspended because we are not satisfied and we think we should ah. have been in a position to be satisfied now. So I don't know what my little friend is going to present. Let's to hear what he has to say. So, so I, I, I reserve what our application will be in that respect. Okay, good. And secondly, just the date. The date, my little friend Mr. Muncher has, has said that he would prefer a date in May. The 6th of May, I think we've agreed and all the parties are available on the 6th of May. We, we don't like the long postponement, um, but nevertheless, the 6th of May suits all parties. It might also be out of our hands, depending on what, in, in, what the in, court so, so, uh, so, so rolls on. So for the criminal matter, the 6th of May suits all parties, and that is the application. Okay. As, far as, the, as far as the provisional date for the criminal proceedings are concerned, whether there should be another date for the inquiry, um, um, depending on what evidence might, that, that would Let's deal with that separately. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and finally, um, I, 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 uh, there was just one other point relating to, yeah, to, the, to the medical evidence. Obviously, we agree with my little friend, Mr. Muncher. It is quite reasonable that issues of the health relating to any accused, and particularly a high-profile accused such as Mr. Zuma, I agree, there are, there are issues of, of privacy and sensationalism and press, um, um, invasion of privacy, etc. We agree that he has a right that that be protected, obviously. Therefore, any application by my learned friend that the matter should be dealt with in camera relating to the medical evidence, that when your ladyship is apprised of, of the nature of the, of the medical evidence, we would, we would go along with any application which seeks to protect Mr. Zuma's privacy, seeks to order the non-publication of any evidence, but that does not exclude the state, and it does not exclude the court. The state and the court, I submit, have to be apprised of the nature of, of what is going on, even if it's not in, in the greatest detail, but we need to know the basics of what is going on, what the prognosis is, and what the matter, because it may be that we would want to hear in person from the doctor. We've done that in numerous cases in all courts in this country, where the doctor has to come and explain what's going on if we're not satisfied. But uh, that is a process uh, um, for the future. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Mr. Mancha. Excuse the court, my lady. <coughs> uh, let me begin by saying there are a few points that, before I get into the matter of whether your ladyship should consider to issue a warrant or not in terms of section uh, 170. Uh, I just want to clear certain issues which uh, my learned friend keep on conversing them in every appearance that we make. Firstly, the invite to pre-trial uh, arrangement. We have indicated to the state that such invite, as far as we're concerned, is premature. And on the basis that we have petitioned 
And the basis of our petition is that we believe that there are reasonable prospect of success in the bet. That's number one. Number two, given present Zuma position that he cannot afford to deploy resources on a proceeding that according to him might not happen. So the reply from President Zuma as far as the invite for pre-trial it has been done in good faith without being obstructive, if my learned friend is trying to say obstructive. My lady, when a person makes a petition and raises the issues that we have raised uh, in our petition, President Zuma believes that a higher court will vindicate him. So, the, the answer is along those bases, rather than to obstruct. Then the other point that the state keep on raising all the time is that they invited President Zuma to join an application to the Concord. Clearly, the circumstances and the issues that Mr. Zuma is raising in his matter are not entirely the same with what the second accused is raising. So he is entitled to approach a forum that he believes he will get a legal reference. So again, his route to petition the Supreme Court of Appeal, again, is done not as obstructing anything. So it doesn't make sense that the state will keep on repeating this as if there is something wrong if a litigant chooses to approach a higher court in which such higher court is competent to give the relief that that, that, that litigant seeks. So <clears throat> moving to, to the matter of President Zuma's sickness, it is true, my lady, we have addressed a letter which I beg uh, leave to hand to your ladyship. The letter dated the 15th January. I assume the other sides have. My lady? I assume the other sides have copies of it. Yeah, they do. They, they do, my lady. They do. Uh, <clears throat> in that letter, my lady. <clears throat> yes? It has been a public knowledge ever since last year. Uh, a late October and early November, when President Zuma could not honor the invite to the Commission of Inquiry, where he indicated uh, that he was hospitalized in Durban in the week of one week in October last year. He was meant to appear before the Commission. He couldn't do so and he was prevented due to illness. But it's also a matter of public knowledge that in mid-November last year, his medical team decided to take him out of the country to seek medical treatment. And then he returned sometime in December last year. In order for him to return back to the place where he's receiving medical treatment on the 23rd of January 2020. During the week of the 7th of January, President Zuma underwent two operations in Pretoria. And given his age and the fact that he did not recover much quicker. As so far when as did he undergo the operations? In Pretoria. A date? Did you um, mention a date? My lady, I think one operation was on the 7th of January. I think the other one was on the 9th of January. Uh, subject to correction, of course. But it was within that. Mm -hmm. So he was hospitalized again. Um, and that affected the timed departure of the 23rd of January. 
given the nature of the two operations, given his age, that you need to optimize him before he can travel. He eventually traveled on the 27th. 27. 27th 27 of, of January. So the, the letter that I've handed to you, my lady, we indicated to the state on the 15th of January um, that President Zuma won't be available to appear in court due to the fact that he has to continue his medical treatment abroad. Uh, we then had correspondences with the state. Uh, as, as my learned friend has indicated, he had no reason not to believe the word from President Zuma's representative that indeed he was not going to appear in this court today. But so at that stage, my lady, it was a matter of public knowledge that the former president will be out of the country to continue his medical treatment. So it was the right thing to indicate to the state that he will not be available for them. I will get into whether the request by the state and the attitude by the state was reasonable or not under that circumstances. I will do so, my lady, when I ask you uh, in terms of how to exercise your discretion in terms of 170. <coughs> your ladyship is aware that the president of a republic and former president of a republic medical conditions is a matter of state security. These are matters handled by the military. The people in charge of the president and former president health is from the military doctors. The military doctors saw it fit, given the condition of President Zuma, that he received <coughs> medical treatment in a jurisdiction where he is. Indeed, they had indicated in a note that I beg leave to hand to you. Um, I will hand over to, to my lady an original note from the military hospital. Let's give these uh, a marking. Your letter is dated, shall I say, Exhibit 1, 20, um, Exhibit 1 dash um, 4 to 20, so that it doesn't get mixed up with all the other exhibits. That I'm indebted to your letter. Right? And this will. Second uh, document is Exhibit uh, 2 4 to 20. Um, it's marked as that. I take it, Mr. Downer, and Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Hu, that you've seen this document? Well, Copies of it, at least. Yeah, uh, my learned uh, friend, Mr. Manchin, did show us a copy um, in chambers mm. uh, earlier today. Might I just say that I didn't... Um, yeah, might I just have a look at the certificate, my lady? I don't yeah, have, sure. have a copy with me at the moment. So, my lady, this, this certificate, which my learned friend seeks to hand up, is um, as he's described. But might I just say that uh, under layman's diagnosis, it says medical condition. Okay, uh, yeah. I just want you to look at it, and yeah. you can address me and, later. Yeah, and yeah, and might I just say that? I, yeah, I'll address your relation as to your disability and as to our you to this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We don't necessarily accept that it is admissible. I get it. As more. Thank you. 
That's it. So exhibit two is the <coughs> original uh, SAMHS prescription and duty restriction form. Yes, you'll tell me more about this. Well, form. my lady, I, I'm not sure if I had the state correctly that a medical <coughs> note from the military. Sorry? My lady, I'm saying, I hope I didn't hear the state properly, that they want to dispute the admissibility of a medical note with an original stamp from our military. Well, I, I will deal with that issue, my lady, as I go further. Well, my lady, that medical note yeah. has indicated the, the return to be on the 30 of October 2020. 30? 30 April 2020. My lady, mm -hmm. may I say, as I indicated before, that the health of a president, the health of a president, as a matter of national security, is a matter of our armed forces. The doctor who is in charge and the doctor who has appended his signature is a doctor attached to our military, to the military. And who hospital. is that? Is is uh, ZK Moteni? Uh, is that, is that Indeed, the doctor? My lady. Indeed, my lady. Um, so, so on the faith of it, my lady, it will be absurd for a state to doubt admissibility of a medical note stamped by our military unless if the prosecution team does not represent the same state that this military resides well as our colleague uh, there in uh, kzn ayanda mthongo indicated later uh, the legal representation of former president jacob zuma might be requesting for a postponement on the basis of illness and there you have uh, senior counsel lungisani daniel mancha making that such request as always at this time of the day we're following multiple stories so we're going to quickly come